Today we're going to play around with memory permissions and specifically to make the memory in our programs read only. Welcome back everybody. After my last video, some of you did express some interest in talking about read-only memory, memory permissions, basically how to protect blocks of memory. This isn't something that most beginners are exposed to, but it can be useful in trying to increase the security of some of your software. For example, maybe you got a block of memory. You want to make sure that any kind of malicious input can't actually change that memory. So that's what we're looking at today. Before we do, a big thanks to all of you who support this channel, either on Patreon, buying great merch like this, or by sharing videos with your friends. I really appreciate it. You make this channel possible. Now let's jump into the code. Okay, so we're starting today with a simple program and a simple make file over here which will compile that program. So nothing fancy here. Check out my make videos if you haven't seen make files before. And now in an ideal, maybe slightly naive world, what I would like to do is I'd like to be able to do something like this. I'd like to be able to just say character pointer p1 equals malloc size of char times however many characters I want, let's say 50. So I have a block of bytes that I'm just going to allocate here. And then I would like to tell the computer to make that block of memory. In this case, these 50 characters, I'd like to make them read only, right? And that would be great, but it's probably not going to work. And to understand why we need to understand a bit more about how computers work with memory. So first let's come down here and I just want to print out this address. Okay. So we're going to say P1 and then percent P that's going to print out an address of a pointer and then pass in P1 there. Okay. So now let's come down here. Let's compile it myself a little more room so I can see what's going on and then we'll run it and you can see this address now if hexadecimal bugs you uh, do check out my video on hex usually when we are looking at memory addresses we are looking at hexadecimal values and also I've mentioned this in previous videos but on most computers when we are dealing with memory what we're actually dealing with is virtual memory and that virtual memory is typically organized into pages and those pages have a certain size on this machine my page size is 4K, but you may have other page sizes on different machines. I know some of the new Macs are looking at 16K. And the mechanism that we're going to use to make memory read only, well, it works on whole pages, right? We have to protect a whole page. So you can't just set a few bytes to be read only. I'm going to need to make a page or multiple pages read only. And this address here that we received right here is not aligned to a particular page. It's basically right in the middle of a page. Now, how do I know that? Well, because page sizes are always powers of two and I've got 4K pages, then this last, the last 12 bits of the address, when I'm using 4K pages, these low order 12 bits, they tell us where we are in the page. And so these would be zero if I was at the beginning of a page, but because I'm not at the beginning of a page, it's just this 2A0. It's basically the middle of the page somewhere. And of course, I could use this address, do a little math and basically zero these out, figure out the address of the start of the page that this block is on and then I could protect the entire page. But that's probably also going to have some unfortunate side effects because I don't know what else is stored on this page. This is just a page being used by the heap. And so there may be other blocks there that I don't want to make read only. And so it's likely if I just read, make the whole page read only that I'm going to cause unintended negative side effects for my program. So instead, I do have a few ways to allocate memory that is going to be page aligned, meaning that it starts at the beginning of a new page and it's the only thing on the page. And that's gonna be really helpful and important to make sure that we don't make read only something we didn't intend to make read only. So first of all, before we get too far into this, I want to just grab a few things. I wanna first get the page size because it may be different on different machines. And so let's just say, let's make a variable called page size. There are a few different ways I could get my page size. Uh, today, I'm gonna to use sysconf. This is available on any of your POSIX compliant operating systems. It's basically used to grab different system configuration parameters Parameters. The one I want is called SC page size. That's system configuration page size. So this is going to get the system configuration. Just in case uh, I type that in wrong and we get an error, let's just check to see if it's negative one. That's going to be an error. And we'll just call P error to get the appropriate error message. Obviously, in your program, you would put whatever error handling actually makes sense. 
Also for this example, because I wanna show that you can do sort of just part of a block, not the whole thing, I'm also gonna come down here and make another variable called buffer size, and that's gonna be two times the page size. We're gonna allocate basically blocks that are two pages, so in this case, 8K, and then we'll be able to play with just one of the two pages. Okay, so now we've got some sizes. Now how do we allocate things in a way that are gonna work with making our memory read only? Well, the first thing, let's let's create a, let's allocate a couple more pointers, P2 and P2. P3. The first one I'm going to use is POSIX mem align. Now this function is kind of like malloc. Yeah, it's called slightly differently, but it is a lot like malloc in that it allocates memory. It just happens to allocate them along page or, or actually any power of two boundary. So what we'll do here is we'll say, okay, we want to pass in a pointer to a pointer. So the address of P2. So I wish like malloc, malloc returns a pointer. That's really convenient. In this case, uh, we're not, it's not going to return a pointer. It's instead just going to take an address of a pointer and it's going to put put the pointer or the address of the block that gets allocated into that pointer like this. We need to tell it what alignment we want. In this case, we want it to be aligned to our page size. This needs to be a power of two. So POSIX memalign doesn't just work with page alignment. It works with kind of any arbitrary alignment that happens to be a power of two. And then we're gonna specify how big of a block we want. So in this case, buffer size is the size we want. Okay, now this can also, in certain circumstances, return an error. So what we'll do, let's check this as well. This is gonna return zero on success. So if it's anything other than zero, then I'm going to handle errors here. POSIX mem align. We'll just print out the error message that we got, just like we did before. Okay, so this is going to allocate two pages, and basically it's going to uh, make sure that they're aligned to our 4K page size. I Meaning this pointer will always start at the beginning of a page. So this should work. Now there's one other way I want to show you, which is using mmap. Okay, so mmap, we've seen this in previous videos, particularly where I talked about shared memory. I'll put a link down in the description. If you missed that video, check it out. But mmap is basically there so the processes can request virtual memory from the operating system. And it's a little more complicated than POSIX memaline, but it's not too bad. Basically what we're gonna do here is we're gonna first start out with a hint. I'm just gonna put null. This is this is to tell it where it wants the memory or where I want the memory. At this point, I don't really care where the memory gets put. After that, we're going to add the size. So buffer size, in this case, we want two pages, so 8K. Then I'm going to say, this is my protections, okay? And this is of course very relevant to this video. I can say I want it to be readable and I want it to be writable. Okay, for now, I'm just gonna make it both readable and writable. We could take off the write and make it read only. I'm also going to request that this mapping be anonymous. That means that we're not gonna give it a name. And I'm also going to make it private, meaning that it's not shared with other processes. Okay, so this is how we would request two pages of readable and writable memory. And let's just say P3 equals this. Okay, so this does more like malloc, it returns a pointer. And then, oh, and I forgot two more arguments. Uh, sorry, negative one and zero. These are used for memory map file IO. I have a video on that. It's not the topic for today, but check out that video. I'll put it down in the description along with the others. And of course, if this fails, then P3 is going to be map failed. And so we can just use P error again to put out an error message. Okay, so now we have two different techniques for how we can allocate memory that is aligned to pages. That will be the only thing on his pages, and so it's suitable for changing memory protections. But at this point, I just want you to see that what's going on, so before we get too far into it, let's come down here and let's print out our other two addresses. Okay, so P2 and P3. Okay, now if we compile it, we are getting a bit of a warning because I passed in a character double pointer to something that wanted a void double pointer. Okay, so if I just say void star star, we should be good. And now if we run it, you can see, okay, a couple different things happened. First of all, just like before, this is pointing into the middle of the heap, so not aligned. But these other two addresses, which of course got stuck in very different places, that's fine. We don't really care in this example where it ended up. But notice that these are all aligned. Their bottom 12 bits are zero, which means they are located at the beginning of a page. Okay, so that's what we wanted. Now let's make sure that we can actually write to the memory. So now he, down here, let's do something like this, writing, and let's just use memset. That's probably the easiest way to write to something. So let's write fives to every byte in this block. We'll pass in buffer size here, and let's do the same thing with P3. We can write to both of these, and then print F writing done, exclamation point, just because we're excited. 
Okay, so at this point we can write to our block, no problem, nothing went wrong. We were, it allowed us to write to it the entire 8K of each of these blocks. So nothing to worry about. Now let's look at how we make it read only. Now one option we have down here is we could have just come down here and removed, like I mentioned before, we could just say remove the right here. And now if we run it, you know, as we seg fault when it tries to write because one of the blocks is now read only. So that's, that's one way. If we basically, when we map the pages, if we know we want it to be read only, then we can go with that route. Now it is quite common though, instead to have programs that want to map the memory, fill it with something and then make it read only. So for that, what we're going to use is Emprotect. So here, let's say that we've already put our fives in there. And this, of course, would be whatever you actually wanted to put in there. But now we can say something like if Emprotect. Okay, so what we're going to do is pass in an address. Now, in this case, what I'd like to do is let's take uh, the block that P2 is pointing to, the one we got from POSIX memo line. And I'm just going to take P2 plus page size. So what this is going to do is it's going to just make read only the second page. You got two pages. The first page is going to be readable and writable. The second page is going to be read only. And so we're going to specify the size of the thing that we want to protect and the protections. So in this case, we want it to be readable, but only readable. And then let's check to see if it returns a negative one. So if we get an error, then once again, just like with all the others, we're going to print out an error message for mProtect. Okay, so at this point, we have told the OS that we want that second page to be read only. So let's see what happens when we actually write to it. Now for this, I could just use memset, right? We could just do this. And you could see that sure enough, it does the first writing works, but then the second one fails. But what I'd really like to do here instead of this is let's let's make a for loop and let's start at zero and go to buffer size. Because what I'd like you to see is I'd like to, you to be able to see that it is just this one page. I'd like to see where the seg fault actually happens. So let's just be a little more verbose here. And I'm going to say, let's print out our index and the address that we're looking at. And then let's print out writing. And then here we're going to print out I and we're going to print out P2 plus I. Okay, so this is going to be the address, basically how many characters into this block that we're actually looking at. And then each time through here, so this is what basically telling you I'm about to write to this thing. And then let's come down here and say P2, the ith element of P2. Remember pointers and arrays are basically the same thing in C anyway. And we'll set this so let's set it to something different to set it to three. Okay. So now we're going to go through entry by entry and write to it. And then we'll see what happens. So if we come down here, we compile and we run it. Well, now you can see that it successfully writes all the way up until it hits index 4096 or one page exactly into my block. So when it tries to write to location 4096, that's where you actually go to the next page, the one that we marked as read only. And at that point, that's when we seg fault, which is again, the appropriate thing that happens when you have read only memory that you try to write to. So yeah, so maybe a little more involved than you expected, but now you know how to make blocks of memory in your programs read only, how to change the permissions. I do hope that helps you on a future project. Click something on your way out, like, subscribe, and until next week, I'll see you later.